Hello, good evening and welcome to a new episode of Arguably the Reading Quest. So the book I'm going to talk about today is Italo Calvino, Why Read the Classics? So this is a book that tells us that why read the classics? This is a passionate defense of a value of great literature. So this is a classic that talks about other classic. Classic we know are those books that are timeless, that have withstood the test of time. But Italo Calvino in the collection of these 36 essays have talked about 36 different writers that have influenced him in the various stage of his life. And there are 14 points on which he defines what a classic is and why it should be read. So let me read a few points directly. So Italo Calvino tells us that let us begin by putting forward some definitions. The classics are those books about which you usually hear people saying, I am rereading and never I am reading. At least this is the case with those people whom one presumes are well read. It does not apply to the young. Since they are at a stage when their contact with the world and with the classics which are part of that world is important, precisely it is their first such contact. The second parameter of a classic is that the classics are those books which constitute a treasured experience for those who have read and loved them, but they remain just as rich an experience for those who reserve the chance to read them for when they are in the best condition to enjoy them. For the fact is that the rereading and reading we do when young can often be of little value because we are impatient cannot concentrate, lack expertise in how to read or because we lack experience of life. The classics are books which exercise a particular influence both when they are, both when they imprint themselves on our imagination as unforgettable and when they hide in the layers of memory disguised as individual or the collective unconscious. For this reason, there ought to be a time in one's adult life which is dedicated to rediscovering the most important re-readings of our youth. A classic is a book which with each re-reading offers as much of a sense of discovery as the first reading. So, now this can be considered as a corollary of this one, that a classic is a book which even when we read it for the first time, gives the sense of re-reading something we have read before. Now, the sixth point is that a classic is a book which has never exhausted all it has to say to its reader. And that is why if you see, the more you read, the more you get into the psychological nuances of a character. So, as the novel progresses or as a classic progresses from beginning to end, we feel as if the characters were real men and women of real flesh and blood. They have their own joys and sorrows. They have their own pain and suffering as the novel progresses. So much so that we feel that uh, it is not a fictitious story, rather it is something that is very much a part of our own world and that has a lasting imprint. And more to it, with each rereading, you will get a hitherto unknown aspect of the character. Say for instance, the reading of a classic, a great classic like Ramayana or Mahabharata or Bible or let's say uh, fairy tales. Or, or let's say the Jatak Kathaya or Panch Tantra or Aesop's Fable. So every time you will read it, uh, you will get a different nuances of the protagonist or the characters that are. So that with each, each nuances, with each reading, a different, uh, uh, you know, a flavor is to be reached, a different kind of uh, hitherto unknown world is to be visualized, is to be experienced. And that is why a classic is a book that never bores you. Classic is a book that uh, overwhelms you every time you reread it. Now, the eighth point is that a classic is a work which constantly regenerates a pulviscular cloud of critical discourse around it, but which always shakes the particles off. Classics are book which, the more we think we know them through hearsay, the more original, unexpected and innovative we find them when we actually read them. And this, of course, you know, happens when a classic text work is a classic. That is when it establishes a personal relationship with a reader. 
no matter however much you have heard about the brothers Karamazov of Kafka's trial or or Jean Paul Sartre Nusa, but when you will experience reading those books firsthand, uh, you will find them the most original, the most unexpected, and 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 the most surprising fact, which so far you have not heard, even though you have heard many things uh, from many different sources about those books. But your first reading will be as original as possible. The tenth point is that a classic is a term given to any book which comes to represent the whole universe. A book on par with ancient talismans. A definition such as this brings us close to the idea of total book. Uh, which means... Uh, wherein you will find a powerful relationship not of the identity but of the oppositions and antithesis and the character will act like an archetype a prototype character that will uh, that 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 will be revealed in the various other classics that you will read however original the characters are 11th point is that your classic is a book to which you cannot remain indifferent and which helps you define yourself in relation or even in opposition to it. I do not believe, Italo Calvino says, I need justify my use of the term classic which makes no distinction in terms of antiquity, style or authority. Okay, For the sake of my argument here, what distinguishes a classic is perhaps only a kind of resonance we perceive emanating either from an ancient or a modern work, but one which has its own place in cultural continuum. Which again further propels his point number 12 is that a classic is a work that comes before other classic, but those who have read other classics first immediately recognize its place in the genealogy of classic work. A classic is a work which relegates the noise of the present to a background hum, which at the same time the classic cannot exist without. And the fourteenth and the last point is that a classic is a work which persists as background noise even when a present that is totally incompatible with it holds away. The fact remains that reading the classic seems to be at odds with our pace of life, which does not tolerate long stretches of time or the space for humanist otium and also with the ecle eclectism of our culture which would never be able to draw up a catalogue of classic works to suit our own time. So when I was a child, I used to think that, you know, Malgudi is a real railway station where Raju the guide waits for, you know, its passenger. No matter how hard the world progresses, but how a child suffers will always resemble the suffering of an orphan child called Oliver Twist, although it's been 170 years since the book has been written. But anyone who will read Oliver Twist, be it anyone from Russia or Delhi or any small town in Bihar or Banaras or anyone from Nordic countries or anyone from modern day Britain as well, will immediately relate to the suffering of Oliver Twist as a child. So Oliver Twist as a child uh, is something that is so intense in its character that the more you read, the more uh, deeper you delve down into the character of Oliver Twist and there lies the importance of reading classic. A classic is something that has a universal significance and a permanent relevance. A classic is something that treats similar themes as we experience in our day-to-day -day life but the treatment is very singular, the treatment is very unique and classic is something which is marked by uh, amazingly and originally high quality of style, a singularly high quality of style. So, if this, all these parameter interests you, I believe this is the book that is to be read. And apart from this, there are 36 essays in this book in which the writer Italo Calveno talks about his own favorite classics, be it Mark Twain or Leo Tolstoy or Jean Paul Sartre or, or, or Oliver Twists or, or mm, Charles Dickens. Okay, so please read it and please enjoy it. If still you haven't liked, share and subscribed my YouTube channel, arguably the reading quest, please do. Thank you so much. Happy reading.